All right, hello and welcome everyone to a builds refresh for Excalibur. Before we get into this, I want to talk about, of course, you guys are waiting for the tier list. Basically, TLDR, I need to do a few builds refreshes so that I have builds to point people towards for the tier list. Um, so we're doing those before the tier list actually happens out of kind of necessity. So for that, we're going to talk about Excalibur and his new build that just totally removes Exalted Blade because it's gotten too old. For that, let's talk about a few things. Basically, whenever Excalibur was recently like kind of tuned up uh, with the rest of the starters, Slashdash was improved very significantly and turned into a pseudo-exalted that is actually worth using. Pseudo-exalteds can take advantage of all of the new melee toolbox um, as long as they meet a few parameters. Uh, and that means that they are far and away better than actual exalted weapons that have access to none, basically, of the new tools, or even a lot of what we would consider to be the very old tools, like Blood Rush. So with that, um, Exalted Blade is just simply too old and unnecessary, and you are better off just using Slash Dash and guns and never using Exalted Blade, which is a sad state of affairs for not only Excalibur, but all Exalted Warframes. But it is the way that it is currently. For that, this is the build. Now, right off the bat here, this is Excalibur Umbra. Everyone gets Excalibur Umbra. He comes with the Umbral mods. I have opted to not remove any of these because I do not think anyone would want to remove the Umbral polarities from Umbra. That being said, there are better options. If you do not want to just go and keep these, Replacing Umbral Fiber with things like Adaptation uh, and using mods like Rolling Guard pretty much is just going to always be better than using this stuff for survivability because honestly Excalibur really doesn't have the health and armor stats uh, that he should be using these other over other options because he's just he's just simply not tanky enough like other Warframes are uh, and he also doesn't have a heal baked into his kit which makes things a little questionable. That being said, they are totally fine, and you do get a lot of strength this way, so there's no problem with using them, and you will be fine. Of course, I, uh, it's it's less, it's less, not different enough to the point that I've opted to just keep them uh, and show this off in an easier way. Also worth noting, uh, this build is zero forma as long as you don't include Primed Sure-Footed, which is not necessary, but just really convenient for this build. Other stuff. You'll note where we're using two augments. We're using both Furious Javelin and Surging Dash. To go over Furious Javelin first, uh, this is each enemy hit will increase Excalibur's melee damage by 15% for 16 seconds. This was improved in an augment pass. That made it so that it is no longer capped, which means you can get considerably more melee damage than you could before. Uh, and in addition, this buff is a final multiplier, which means it's not additive with things like Pressure Point. It is its own thing that is increasing damage separately you can easily get like 300 to 600 percent uh on this buff which means three to six times as much damage not only for all of your regular melee shenanigans uh but also for slash dash which is a huge huge damage buff you do not have to use it if you don't want to but it's hard to find something that can compete with this in addition we're using surging dash this is each enemy hit during slash dash further increases your melee counter by eight this is exceedingly useful for building up combo, which raw increases the damage of Slash Dash once again, and has a few other uses that we're going to go into. Um, but basically, building up to full combo quickly is very, very helpful. You can replace this depending on what tools you have to go with this build, um, but most of the time you're probably going to want it for quick ramping. Uh, otherwise, we're just running a good chunk of duration. This is for the duration of the Furious Javelin buff and also for our Subsume, which is Roar in this case, but we're going to go into that more in a moment. Uh, and then we also have more range with overextended and stretch. You need a lot of range for this build because this build essentially relies on the chain range on slash dash being good enough to hit a ton of enemies. This is about 16 and a half meters, which most of the time means that we're going to hit every single enemy that is even somewhat close to one another in a tile whenever we hit our one, which means we're usually going to get like about 15 to 20 enemies per one press, which on rate for energy and because that's going to instant kill all of them is pretty good. In terms of augments, we're running Molt Augmented. This makes Roar and also our Furious Javelin buff stronger, along with, of course, just the base damage of Slash Dash. Uh, so more strength is good where you can find it. And we're also running Arcane Fury. Uh, this melee damage buff works on Slash Dash and is a just 
huge power increase. You could, if you want to run kind of more survivability, run things like Aegis in this slot, as this damage is definitely not necessary, uh, but it is, of course, very good, and it's definitely good depending on what you might happen to be missing for this build. Now, real quickly, we're going to go over the tool that allows us to use Roar on this build, because normally you can't use Roar on Excalibur Umbra for the purposes of Slashdash. And the reason why I say you can't is because Slashdash actually does not have any critical chance whatsoever to start, and you kind of need crits to really get it going. So for that, we have a solution. That solution is, you guessed it, the Ceramic Dagger. Uh, the Ceramic Dagger, of course, the star of the show for many pseudo-exalted builds. Um, basically, the Incarnan buffs are added to your pseudo-exalted. So we get the 100 damage. Obviously, the combo stuff from Ceramic Dagger is excellent. Uh, and, of course, finally, we get the plus 30% flat critical chance that is also added to Slash Dash. So this gives us access to crits and lets us use all of the crit mods that we would want to use to increase this and lets us do red crits to all these enemies with no real problems. That being said, you do not have to have the Ceramic Dagger, though it is extremely good. The build for this is just our normal kind of crit stick build. Uh, we're using melee exposure here. It is worth noting that if you only really care about the slash procs, melee retaliation is the best you can do. Um, but I find that the raw damage out of melee exposure is probably a little more preferable, but it could really go either way. If you are going to try and fit like maybe a primed redirection in here, that's maybe an argument for retaliation. But also, one of the downsides to Excalibur uh, is that he is not invincible during slash dash. He is health immune during slash dash, which means his shields can be damaged, but his health cannot which means you're usually going to not have shields while you're dashing around because enemies will be shooting you, uh, which makes retaliation turn off entirely, which is part of the reason why I prefer exposure. Very strange choice to have this not be just immunity while dashing, but eh, I guess he doesn't get that for whatever reason. Now then, for something a little more new player friendly that doesn't require incarnans, let's talk about Wrath. So this is instead of Roar, we have Wrathful Advance. This is Calervo's Subsume, which is relatively easy for new players to get. So, of course, there's the argument we're not going to go into, which is why would you not just be playing Calervo if you have access to this? But that aside, um, this adds a flat melee critical chance. So this adds 116% critical chance, which means we will always crit on Slash Dash whenever we use Wrathful Advance and then start Slash Dash. A thing that I have noticed that is very interesting is that even though this duration is sort of short at 15 seconds, if you start a slash dash sequence with this active the crit will persist for the entire duration of that slash dash no matter how long over time it goes so if you have two seconds remaining of this buff and you hit slash dash and you're hitting all the enemies in like the entire area for 20 seconds it will last for that full amount of time which is actually nice that you don't need to like stop mid slash dashing to re-up wrathful advance wrathful advance of course is also just a teleport into a heavy attack uh, so you can cash in all the combo that you're building with Surging Dash if you have a good melee weapon for it to pretty much obliterate whatever you're Wrathful Advancing to, uh, akin to the same way that Calervo does it. So this is an option uh, if you do not have Incarnans uh, or any of the Incarnans that can add that crit uh, for Slash Dash uh, and just want to use something regular. With that being said, the build remains the same otherwise, uh, although you definitely can't switch out Surging Dash if that's the case, as you will need a way to keep combo. Uh, as the reason you can switch out Surging Dash is because the Ceramic Dagger will have most of your combo built up for you with the increase by, well, you know, 100 there and 20 here. So you'll have most of it at most times. You can count on just regular building up to get you the rest of the way. Otherwise, you really should have Surging Dash on. But you can also just use Gijati, which, of course, comes with Excalibur. Uh, and on the build for that, for slash dashing, this is the build that I would generally suggest. Now, the reason why I generally suggest this is also with no arcane, so you can get into this kind of as a newer player. It's, of course, our two sacrificial mods, because we already have the, the polarities for that. Uh, and it's also worth noting that this is also a no forma build needed. This is very new player friendly. The two things that you do need for it, however, are focus energy and focus radon. The reason you need these is because these give heavy attack efficiency. And because you're going to be using Wrathful Strike, you don't want to spend all of your combo if you don't have to whenever you heavy attack. Um, and this makes it between the both of them that you're only going to spend like 20% of your combo, which is pretty negligible and is easily built back up uh, with Surging Dash very, very quickly. Uh, this also allows you to just kind of as needed apply a uh, Nikana heavy attack, which always proc slash and is really good for taking down enemies that are giving you any kind of trouble. So if you're a newer player, this is something that I would shoot for all of these mods. 
are either, of course, given to you or generally pretty easy to acquire. So it's a build that I would suggest you go for if you want a lower level version of this build. But please keep in mind, it is not going to compare to like the full Incarnan ceramic dagger. That's just not realistic. Uh, this thing adds a lot to what Excalibur can do. But we will, of course, be showing just what the full build does. Uh, so that's what's up. Worth noting, uh, I just have the Nadaruk and the Grimoire on here. Uh, we're probably not going to use them at all. Uh, although the Grimoire does have a Dex Arcane on it for the purposes of keeping combo timer up. So for that, we have our 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. Uh, and then I'll turn off the Invincibility on here and we'll just get at them. So with this, you basically want to be using uh, your three, uh, getting Roar on. You can blind them if you want to, and then you use your one. So Slash Dash also now always proc Slash, which is very good against armored enemies. And you can see the rate at which we are building combo in the bottom right there uh, and just how effective that is. You can see that the damage buildup is pretty impressive pretty quickly. And if we also transform into our Incarnate version, we will get all of those additional buffs for being transformed. So we can just kind of keep this going uh, and get it to be more and more ridiculous every time until we're actually at full ramp. So this is killing these level 200 Steel Path Heavy Gunners in pretty much one hit, even though it wasn't even fully ramped up at the start there. If we start fully ramped up, things get a little dumber. Roar did run out here, but it doesn't super matter. And this brings me to my next point, which is I have chosen to go with Roar, but you absolutely do not have to use Roar on this build. Uh, if you want to fit something else, you could fit something like if you wanted to fit Harrow's Subsume for more survivability, that's very reasonable, especially if you wanted to combine that with Retaliation. That is a reasonable way to go, uh, as you do have good stats for it. Uh, and there's, you know, kind of whatever Subsume you want to get into is definitely possible here. Uh, although you do need to make sure that it doesn't require too, too much duration um, or way too much strength. Although you can sort of reasonably get this build uh, up to a little over 200% strength, as long as you're including shards. In terms of shards, I've only included two casting speed shards here, which are very helpful for upping your uh, Radial Javelin and Roar recast times, uh, but you could probably really easily get by with just one Tau casting shard, uh, and then you could fill the rest of these slots with strength or duration or whatever like subsume you decide to go with that you want and get the stats that you need for it. There's, of course, also the opportunity to go for more critical damage, uh, if you would like to do that. But if you really want to go hard into that, you would need purple shards, which means you're going to have to find room for flow in this build in order to get all of that sweet, sweet critical damage, which means you probably are going to have to drop either Prime Continuity or Surging Dash, which is fine. If you're comfortable with that, then you can go for it. As I said, Surging Dash is droppable with the Ceramic Dagger. It's just going to be a little slower. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what's up uh, with what Excalibur has going on now. It is like a really chill build. Honestly, whenever like mobile Warframe comes out, you pretty much are just like hitting slash dash and it is taking care of all of the problems. Uh, and then you're still relatively squishy. So sometimes you die. Sometimes that just happens. Luckily, hopefully you have a reasonably invested operator that can get you back up with the Uniru passives, but I know a lot of people don't. Um, but yeah, Excalibur is like, you know, a good middle of the road Warframe that has like a fun slash dash build reasonable-ish crowd control with Radial Howl and, a, you know, a ton of damage to the enemies that you can actually slash dash uh, whenever he's a built up with the proper tools. Also worth noting, uh, I do run Diraga uh, on Excal because he can actually apply statuses to a bunch of enemies around him because the Volklock we have modded for electricity, radiation, and viral. Radiation turns off allies or uh, enemy auras uh, benefiting each other, which is really nice for getting through their defenses. Viral, of course, increases all the damage that we're going to be doing with our Slash procs, especially. And Electricity is like a little minor stun. Uh, and then the build for Diriga is just this. He's very helpful. He also helps a little bit with the energy economy because he's got Mystic Bond uh, on here. So we're getting a little bit of casting from that. And then Manifold Bond and Arc Coil are basically making him just like shoot out the electricity and put all those statuses on the enemies around him, which is very helpful. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into um, the Steel Path and uh, kill some dudes. We're going to Slash and Dash. But yeah, this uh, this new Excalibur build, uh, I was really hoping it wasn't going to be good. Like, as good as running Exalted Blade. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it seems to be better. 
by a pretty considerable margin, especially when you're running uh, uh, higher level content, as it especially gets higher and higher level. Uh, and it is, it is a bit sad. Really, it really just highlights that uh, exalted weapons are all so far behind, and really probably shouldn't be. You can also see the amount of damage that we're getting out of these enemies that uh, don't have as insane armor as the heavy gunners. <clears throat> this is only going to get more ridiculous. You can also just see how much we're capable of like slashing around. Because it will try and chain to every single enemy it can. Ladder 3 in here at kind of a low number. 240, I think it is. Oh, yo, it's only 133. Enemy density will get higher, though, in a moment, though. And, you know, getting more than double damage is also quite fine. And we clearly don't need more hitting for, you know, 1.4 million there. Excalibur just dashing around like a pipe cleaner. Oh, there we go. Didn't want to connect on that one. You do want to, like, more so keep to, like, the hallway environments. Um, because these are going to be just better for you than open areas. One of the things that is a little problematic with Slash Dash is that if enemies are above you on balconies, they will actually often... You will attempt to dash to them and be unable to, so you will be kind of stuck in a dashing loop for an indeterminate amount of time where you can't die and you can't reach the enemy, which is a weird thing that can happen. Um, but you can also just dodge roll out of Slash Dash. That's actually one of the reasons why Rolling Guard is a good option, uh, because you can, even if you're like, you know, if you have statuses on you or whatnot, Rolling Guard can cleanse that after you've been in your one for a little while, uh, which is very useful or like, you know, just staying safe and making sure there's no statuses on you and just just getting around and, you know, the the, the temporary invincibility lets you like set up, like, you know, you, you do rolling guard, you get into this, you roar, and then start dashing once again to go back into being invincible, which is pretty good and useful. You can see having to spend considerably more energy, but the X-Miss not being a problem at all. Whenever we're in these more open environments. Luckily dashing down here with no problems at all. <clears throat> and these enemies, they don't like it. They're not fans. Turns out very, very high damage slash procs are good. Who would have thought? And that's that's pretty much the gist of how this is like just gonna go in general. One of the things I have found is that you do move around a whole lot, uh, obviously, but what that leads to uh, is actually, unfortunately, some, like, kitschiness with spawns. And what I mean by that is that, like, the enemies will often spawn pretty far away because you're constantly moving through tiles and, like, the spawner doesn't like that. Like, all these enemies got all clumped up because, like, I kind of entered that room uh, and then they needed to run through that big old room to get to me which is like what you're seeing now. So like, ideally I would actually not enter that room and just go back here because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna spawn enemies in a way that is not super great for my kill rate. And you can see here at about three and a half minutes, we're at about like 276. If the tiles are really nice to you, you can get that like 100 KPM with this, but like it's if the tiles are nice to you, not if you're Excalibur, you know what I mean? So it's not like insanely impressive uh, or anything like that, but you know, it's like a unique playstyle. It's kind of if for anyone that was like craving old Ash Blade Storm, it's a little bit similar to that. Um, but personally, like I don't think this is like you know headed for the nerf like that was because that was considerably more automatic than this is. This requires, of course, you know, the distance between the enemies to be somewhat limited. Uh, and, of course, you actually have to go from one to the other, not just a true teleport between them all. A thing that you will note is that Acolytes don't like this build. They are very much not fans of being hit by this. Usually just being hit once is enough for them to die to these slash procs, but sometimes they need to be hit twice in order to, you know, feel the pain entirely. Uh, so, yeah, Acolytes really hate this. They are not fans. Pretty much, I mean, anything that can be hit by this really really hates it because like we're doing you know 
hitting an enemy for 4 million and then there's a residual slash proc like the, the scaling on that is actually pretty insane um you're gonna go to extremely high levels before enemies can handle that much before that they're going to be able to handle just killing you the moment you exit your slash dash and that's going to be the thing that becomes much much more of a problem uh and that mostly has to do uh with you like you know having your shields broken during slash dash that's what makes it so that uh you become a, a small a very very small very vulnerable excalibur who has no defenses on his health yeah, in terms of dan like actual just number output though if you've got like you know the timmy brain like i want to see big number happen this build will do that for you like i just hit that guy for 10 million for example like you are you are doing number to these considerably tough enemies uh and if that tickles your brain the right way you're gonna really enjoy this yeah we're at come on kill shot go away at 461 at about six minutes which is about about on rate for what we were getting before with this tile set yeah like we're invincible most of the time it's not like super like it's not ability spammy because like i said i am not doing anything while slash dashing is occurring uh because it does auto target it even goes backwards for you you don't have to aim at anyone as long as you get that initial target and then like all of the uh targets thereafter are within the range of the chain uh then everything's good uh, you can see it also, like, doesn't care about, like, those Eximus bubbles. It'll just go right inside them. And that's all well and good as well. And with the Ceramic Dagger at this level of enemy, you also don't even really particularly need uh, your three. So if you wanted to, like, invest differently and, like, use those other two mod slots for even more survivability, you realistically could, depending on, like, what the kind of, like, top-end levels you're going to are. But, yeah. It's a fun build that, like, you know, makes Excalibur, I think, more viable than he would otherwise be. Because you you still get the rest of his tools um, that you would normally be using. And honestly, like, you know, getting out of the Exalted Blade, locking you into that melee weapon and stuff is just good. Even though it's sad to say that it's good, it, it, is, it is kind of just purely better. Yeah, 13 million on that guy, very nice. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like this build, especially from like showing it off on stream while we were testing it and stuff, it is going to be extremely, a like, you're either going to really want to play this, or you're going to think that this looks like the worst thing in the world, uh, like, visually speaking. Like, I think that is that has been, like, kind of the hard reaction is that, like, some people find this difficult to look at, so sorry uh, for anyone who is having that, although they have probably closed the video already. But that's like one of one of the only things that I've really seen people have to say about this in like a negative way is that they just can't stand to look at the thing. Which, you know, it is how it is, right? Sometimes it just be like that. But yeah, this is uh this is where X Gal's at. Hopefully, at some point, exalted weapons get looked at. And then our boy can, you know. I <laughs> feel like he's been refreshed once again. But uh but as it stands, we are we are somehow in the timeline where you subsume off Exalted Blade, I would say. Cuz it just doesn't do even close to this much. Oh Malice, Malice is not going to like this. Also because we're invincible, we don't really have to like worry about him. Because, like, he can't kill us while we're dashing, so we can hit a bunch of other enemies, and that's just fine. <clears throat> there was 774 at about 9 minutes, which still pretty much tracks. Some of that could, of course, be just due to, like, me, like, playing suboptimally, because I'm, like, explaining what I'm doing, but... You know... It is what it is. He's pretty good. Pretty good. The The survivability is, is questionable and definitely takes some getting used to. I definitely spent uh, a number of test runs getting back up uh, with my operator. But, like, it's, it's a fun, unique build that, like, you know, is kind of kind of Atlas adjacent. Atlas, but with a sword in a lot of cases. Although, I think, like, in general, 
your carpal tunnel will thank you for playing this version because I'm not spamming one the whole time. Like, we, we wish this is what Atlas's one did whenever you held it down. Because that would be a lot better than spamming it all the time. And then just on the way out here, whenever you're, like, traversing from place to place, you're going to use uh, Radial Howl a whole lot more. But you can see me still taking, like, good chunks of damage there. Because we are not invincible. Uh, also, one of the other big benefits of Slash Dash is that it is really good traversal. You can use it as kind of an extra bullet jump. Uh, and they can be chained together. Uh, so that is really nice whenever you don't have a target for it. that You can use it as, like, super fast movement. That is, of course, much appreciated. But generally speaking, that's only really going to be useful whenever you're out on, like, an open world. But in those open worlds, it is, like, a pretty good way to get around, as you can see some of the speed there. But yeah, that's that's new Excalibur. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy him. Show, shows, like, a sad state of certain things in Warframe right now. But at the same time, what a unique build. But yeah, that's going to do it. I will see you guys in the next refresh. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And, of course, as usual, thanks very much to the patrons for supporting the channel, uh, especially the $10 patrons, Alex Barnum, Andrew, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, uh, Blotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Cano Lathra, uh, Dylan Dworski, Thrain, Afon, James Hartsthorn, uh, JC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lou Zant, The Gokel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Ramoxidate, Ruby, Sharp247, Camerialic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Victor Palmer, Wife of Wars, Wadded, and Zerafir. Uh, and of course, thank you very much to all of the $5 and $2 patrons as well. It is much appreciated because I've been asked this a lot. Uh, I am doing the 2024 Warframe tier list, but... I need to get last year's data from whenever DE releases that, which hopefully happens on the January dev stream. Uh, but that's what's holding that up because, you know, that kind of factors into Warframe's getting S ranks or not. But yeah, that's that's what's going on. Uh, and thanks. Thank you, everybody.